have seen a skyscraper and wondered, how does that stay up? Well, the Shard in London is one of the oh. tallest buildings in Europe, and our next guest had a really big hand in creating it. Structural engineer Roma Agrawal designed the foundations and the steel spire on the very top in one of many projects that she's worked on over the past 10 years. And now she's written a guidebook for all of us who wonder about how, how those big buildings can stand so tall. And Roma joins us now from London. Roma, a very good morning to you. <laughs> Hi, good morning. How are you all doing? Oh, fantastic. This is such an impressive building, the Shard. Um, it has 11,000 panes of glass. How difficult was it to put together and keep clean? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it was such a fascinating project. Was I mean, we were bas basically building the tallest building that Western Europe has seen, that the UK has seen. So we were doing things for the first time in some ways, and it, it was just really exciting to be um, a part of that. So, you know, I designed the foundations of the building, and um, I also helped design the actual very top of the tower, which, which was fantastic. Roma, for centuries, the tallest buildings in the world were the Great Pyramids of Egypt. Um, now in Saudi Arabia, a tower is going up that's going to be more than a kilometre tall, I, you know, a thousand metres tall, a kilometre up in the air. How tall can they go before they just fall over? <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully they won't fall over if people like me have anything to do with it. <laughs> but I think what's really fascinating about the history of, of skyscrapers and height is that the pyramids actually held that record of being the tallest structure for thousands of years. And it was really only in medieval times that we started to kind of break past that limit. But now we're kind of exponentially just growing fast and, and high and taller. Um, and it's going to be amazing to see how that carries on. And Roma, of course, you can have your Londons, you can have your Dubais, you can have your Great Pyramids of Giza. We have the Gold Coast. <laughs> on the Gold Coast, we have the Q1 building, which is over 300 metres tall. Um, are we all going to be living in these kinds of buildings in the future? Is this the way to, you know, talk about stopping urban sprawl? Are we all just going to go up and have these mega cities that reach into the sky? So first of all, I just have to say that I'm not a big fan of the fact that that building is taller than the Shard. I'm a little bit jealous of that. <laughs> yeah. um, but as a general concept, I think we won't all be living in those really tall towers. I think there will be the tall towers, the signature ones, the iconic ones, and some of us will be living in them. But we're going to see a lot more medium-rise structures, perhaps, especially in the really big metropolitan cities. Um, maybe kind of eight to 12 stories. And I think that's really what we'll see a bit more of. Lots of friends of mine who've stayed in the Q1 mm. say that they've stayed on the very top floor. Yeah, and when they're too. in the bath, the, the, the water those. wobbles. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is it actually safe to be in a, in a building this tall? And why does it move? It's a bit disconcerting. The wind. So all <laughs> structures move. So every single one of them moves. And I know that sounds kind of scary and counterintuitive, yeah. But, I mean, they're like trees. You get wind on them, they sway. But what oh, our job is to do is to make sure... What? Yeah, they, 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 all, they all sway. And so what we need to do is to make sure they don't sway too much or too quickly so that we feel queasy or sick from that actual movement. And Roma, correct talking? me if I'm wrong, but, don't, but don't, aren't buildings actually designed to sway? Because if they didn't sway, they would just fall over. So you have to build a bit of yield into them for wind movements, for slight ground movements, to, to help them resist earthquakes and, and stuff like that. And some of them that. have pendulums in that counteract the, the swaying. So, yeah. yeah. See, I could be a... Yeah, so all of them have a little bit of flexibility because actually the stiffer you make them, the more material you use, the more expensive they become. So they're not really sustainable structures as well. But, you know, I love the pendulums in the building. So the Taipei 101, um, which is in Taiwan, is over 500 metres tall. And that's got a big pendulum in it because Taipei, of course, experiences typhoons and earthquakes. So they've got a lot of really challenging forces to deal with. Wow. Yeah. Roma, you've written about um, how you were inspired by Emily Warren Roebling. So who was she and, and how do you celebrate her? So she's my absolute hero. So she was actually the daughter-in-law of the original designer of the Brooklyn Bridge in Manhattan. Um, he tragically dies on site and then his son, her husband, takes over the project. But he too has an accident on site. And just as the project's kind of leaving the grasp of the Roebling family, Emily steps in. Now, you know, women weren't really allowed to be educated um, to, to degree level in engineering at the time. And she studied engineering. She figured out how to deal with the laborers on site, 
how to deal with the politicians, the funders who are actually paying for the project. And for 11 years, she actually led the construction of that project. So without a woman um, in the mid 1800s, the Brooklyn Bridge wouldn't have been the same structure it is today. And I'm sure wow. you are inspiring a whole new generation of women engineers. I mean, you're 34 and you have such an impressive building resume already. Um, can you talk us through some of the phobias that people have about tall buildings and, and bridges, the fear that they might fall down? I know that in Sydney, the Sydney Harbour Bridge, when that was first constructed, lots of people thought it would fall into the water, but it's pretty safe, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, so, I mean, I'm actually a little bit scared of heights. I'm, I'm not fantastic myself no. when I go to the top of tall buildings. I, I stay a little bit further away from the, from the back of the glass. Um, but, you know, people do look at structures and think, oh, I wonder how that stands up. And actually, our structures do amazing work every single day, every second of the day. They're, they're you know, absorbing all the forces that are being thrown at them, and they're staying stable, they're staying strong. And so actually, that's the best job of the structural engineer. We know we've done our job when no one really notices the structures around them. But at the same time, I do want people to appreciate the incredible engineering that goes into these structures. And, and that's why I decided to write Build. Uh, Roma's book is called Build. It's called The Hidden Stories Behind Our Structures, and it's available now. You are such an impressive woman, Roma. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, my pleasure.